Hello, it's Thursday, 26th of May, 6.13 p.m. Off to the IPA Tour 2 event, UK Open, I think it's called, in Bradford. So I've been hunted onto a different hotel this time. There's something's happened with the arrangements. So instead of staying at the actual venue, I'm staying like a couple of miles up the road. According to Google Maps, it's four hours and nine minutes to get there. So plus add on a bit of time. We're going to have to stop at least once or twice, I suspect. Uh, and I need to go to the petrol station now and get some screen wash. So yeah, it's going to be a long old journey. I can't say I'm looking forward to this. All oh, right, done screen wash. Uh, got sat nav in. Need to get on the bloody road. It's already 6.25. See if I can get in before 11. That'll be a good goal. Catch you in a bit. Oh, I'm at, um, was it Charwell Services? Still two hours, 40 minutes to go. Got to stop in the saloon, get myself some sustenance. I normally love playing in tournaments, so I'm not feeling it this time. I'm for English pool. I've only played three days of English pool. I've been playing so much nine ball recently because I've all these nine ball events and a little bit of snooker, but I'm struggling to feel motivated at the moment. Hopefully I'll play all right. I don't know what'll get me into it, but it feels a little bit more like a slog than, especially if, maybe if it was closer, it'd be a bit better, but at the moment it feels like it's going to be a little bit of a slog going to this event, so. I'll see if I get on. I want to be up for it, but not at the moment. Well, that's the M1, and this is Leicester Something Services. Oh, welcome break over there. Got 99 miles to go, 1 hour 44 minutes. Time is 9.18. Just getting a bit fed up, so I'm just gonna stop for just because just I'm bored and I kind of need a toilet, but not really a lot, so. Stretch my legs for a bit, see if I can do the rest in one go. I'm just kind of fed up at the moment. Not enjoying this journey, I'm just bored out my brain. <sighs> Literally right on the motorway here. <laughs> Seems all right though. Ooh, wouldn't want to stay there without earplugs, Jesus. It's getting to be night time now. All right, let's get back on the road. One hour, 44 minutes of driving to go. 97 miles before I get to make a left turn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is what a touring pool player has to deal with. I don't know how the snooker players manage it. They're just going to what? constantly flying abroad and stuff like that. Traveling the qualifiers. I mean, it's like, it is a tough life. I mean, I'm not saying this is a tough life. This isn't a tough life, but doing the snooker stuff, that must be, Jesus, that must be so hard. I know people are saying, oh yeah, well, you're getting to play snooker for a living, but pressure you're under to make a living. And then, uh, way out. Pressure you're under to make money enough to live and then I do all this traveling as well and still get all these hours of practicing. I don't know how they manage it really. Where the hell is that? How do you get out of this bloody thing? Well, I've just arrived at my hotel, the Campanile something something something. So the the venue cedar something house i don't know whatever in bradford messed up the booking so me and a bunch of other people have been punted over to another hotel about 1.6 miles up the road so it's now 10 past 11 i'm going to see if i can get in and out in 10 minutes um check in dump all my stuff up there and then try and get myself down to the other hotel and see if i can get a little bit of practice in try and make this swift here we go oh this is so late and annoyingly bad time to arrive there you go Right. Lift makes some weird noises. Room 339. Do a proper room tour thingy. I'm gonna get back in maybe. I'm just gonna bomb it in, use a new straight back out. Lights anyone? I do. 
seems pleasant enough. Right. Back down. Drinks down. I'll go back down, but I won't take that with me. That's all right. Lovely view of Bradford, I suppose. <laughs> Some sort of industrial estate. Green room. What's this? Oh, is that a cupboard? That's a bathroom. What's this still then? Oh, separate toilet. That means there's not one in here. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> well, I'm just going to nip to Lou and then we're straight back out and over to the other venue. Right, the Cedar Court, whatever hotel is, six minutes away, so it's time to get a move on. All right, here we go. Oh, it'd be nice to have one of these weekends where I feel tip top and <laughs> nothing's a panic. <laughs> Never gonna happen. There we go, Cedar Court Hotel. Oh, parking, notice, vehicles left, and blah 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 blah. Well, what's this thing here? 24 hours a day, up to two hours free. Right, sod it, I'll stay, make sure I stay two hours and no longer. Playing the flyer at the moment. <coughs> I'm going to put my feet up. How fast this table is, it's crazy. my hotel and get to bed oh i'm just back from uh practice my phone died obviously i've been using it for um sat nav i was just talking to um jj fool who's a um, south african player amazing player i've been watching him for a little bit anyway I and mean, we had a little bit of a chat about nine books obviously played in the uk open and i did as well so but um yeah he broke with those tables that's the fastest table I think I've ever played on in my entire life. English pool table. Absolutely unbelievable. And even he said, he said he's got two brand new tables that have only been recloth. Did he say two? Or was it four? He's like, anyway, he's got some brand new tables that he's just had recloth two weeks ago and he said they're not as fast as that. So obviously the person who fitted those tables, uh, those pulled those cloths so tight to make them, they're like absolute lightning. I mean, I've been practicing on a speed cloth at our club, uh, I've been practicing exclusively on, I mean, I've been only doing, doing it for a few days, but I've been playing exclusively on speed cloths and they are nowhere near as fast as that, the table that I played on today. That was absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. You're trying, trying to hold the cue ball. You can barely like pull the cue back and get through the ball. Or you lose it, it's so, so I mean, if you had, a, I suppose if I had a much softer tip, I'd probably be all right. Obviously, I use my snooker cue for playing snooker as well, so I'm not too soft a tip on it. But I think on, on a table that fast, oh, you basically need a spot of blue tack on the end of the cue to, to be able to grip the cue ball. Even by the end, when I was barely hitting through the ball, I was trying to still like accelerate through the ball, but I'm barely pulling the cue back, basically just coming back up like an inch and going through the ball to try and get that sort of bite on the cue ball. But I just about got the hang of it, but... No, no, that's cool. I had a nice little chat with JJ. He was, he's a cool guy. He's kind of he's kind of got the same opinion as me. So like, um, so both of us, both of us are quite much prefer nine ball to English ball. And he said he's funny actually. He said the exact same stuff that I've been saying as well, which is like, he can play nine ball all day long and have fun and enjoy it and practice. And I'm exactly the same, but I get bored of English pool so quick. And I think the reason, the only real reason I play English pool is because it's there and it's something that's going on in the UK. Like I, I always wanted to be a nine ball player. And when I first got into nine ball, I was like 14, 15, 16. I mean, the first tournament I won was basically like a pro-am. 
it's handicapped though, so I had a bit of an, it was a bit easier for me. But um, yeah, now I had like 64 players in it, and I won that when I was 16. And I thought, yeah, that's, you know what, I could actually be a nine ball player. Really thought I could do it. And then almost immediately, because that was like the year 2000, almost immediately after that world championship, nine ball just vanished off the face of the earth. I won a few, we had a few local tournaments, I won that, and that was it, it just died. And suddenly everyone's playing English pool. And now, now nine ball's kind of kicking off again. It just shows me, it just shows me how much, how much I enjoy nine ball and how much English pool doesn't really do it for me. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd already made this decision. I haven't said this. I don't know if I've said this on the stream. Uh, sorry, not on the stream. I don't know if I've said this on my channel, but basically my plan is I'm going to see out this season with the IPA and effectively I'm retiring from English pool. I'm only going to play snooker. I play in a snooker league on Monday night. We just got, we're a bit like we'll, we'll um, get to the Premier League. Like we just started this season and we, we're storming the league, so we'll get to like the Premier League. So I'll probably play the Premier League Monday night snooker, and the rest of the time I'm just going to be as full time nine ball as I can be. And we're going to, me and my friend Adam, are going to try and get a really good quality table and put it, secrete it away somewhere that we can just practice on it full time. Not full time, but you know what I mean. Obviously, I've got a job. I'm not I'm not expecting to be a full time nine ball player. I'm just probably a bit late in my life to get that good, but certainly that's what I want to be competing in, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on up until the end of this year, and certainly from next year onwards, it's all going to be nine ball. So we'll see. Um. Anyway, just about got the hang of it. I'm not on again until two o'clock tomorrow morning. No, that's not right. Two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> I'm just going to go to bed and just wake up when I wake up, get as much sleep as I can. Yeah, so um, game face on tomorrow. But until then, get my head down, just have a relax and eat it. But catch you in the morning. All right, it's quarter past 12. Was it Friday 27th, I think, of May? Slept in until like half 11. <laughs> Didn't get a seat till three. Sleeping pattern's completely messed up. I'm not on till two o'clock, so I'm gonna get up now, have a shower, see if there's some food places around. So I'm on at two o'clock, and I'm playing the winner of match 103. They start at 3.15, which is an hour and a quarter after my match, which can't start until they've finished their match. Yeah, I'll try and get there for two, but I suspect I'll be sat around doing soddle for hours. But there you go. Oh, I better peel myself out of bed and sort my life out. I'll catch you in a bit. Well, it's quarter past one. As you can tell, I've left this bloody shirt in my uh, bag since I went to the UK Open about a week and a half ago, and it's um, it's gone a bit on the crinkly side. <laughs> Never mind. There's not much food stuff around here. I don't really want to spend 20 quid and eat at the restaurant. So apparently there's a McDonald's just outside the Cedar Court Hotel. I'm just going to swing by there and get uh, get like a chicken wrap or something like that. I should look at the camera. Rio hasn't played his game, so I don't see me starting any time before four o'clock at the minimum. So I'm just going to go and meander over there and see what it's all about. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going to be playing for a while. Well, same as this. This is all crinkled as well. <laughs> Dear me. I suppose you could describe that as being off-brand, but oh well, whatever. <laughs> so the hotel's over there, but I've just seen a bunch of people parked on the road outside, and I actually think that's a good idea, because A, that car park's absolutely rammed, and B, if you have to pay to park, that's pointless if there's free parking on the roads outside, so... I'm gonna do that instead, just gonna leave, leave my car up the road a tiny bit. It's quiet here as well, I can go and put my feet up. Although I, might, I think there might be a nursery school there, so it could seem like a weirdo if I'm hanging around outside that. But aside from that, I think this is a better plan. I'll keep the car here, hope nobody breaks in. Meanwhile, I've got me a McDonald's sweet chili wrap, fruit bag, Coke Zero, it's like quarter to two. I'm not in any hurry because I know, my, I know the match before mine hasn't even started yet, so. As long as I've eaten this in the next 10 minutes, all good. All right, let's head into the venue, it's 5-2. I need the loo, I think Mike Williams is on. So, I haven't said hello to him yet, so I'll come and I'll go and watch his match for a bit. I don't know, I'll, well, I'll speak to the desk and see what the hell's going on with my game, because I've no idea. All right, so Mike's on table four, my game's moved to 4.30. 
what he's done before. Um, my game's on at 4.30. Uh, turns out one of the two people that I'm playing the winner of uh, was at school and I'd finished, it. I'd like an exam and then he's come to do his game. So fair play to him for that, but I guess he's a local. <laughs> uh, so yeah, playing the winner of um, Reese Wilson or something like that versus Rio Smith. We'll see. Alright, so anyway, I'm back in the car because I've forgotten my shoes, so I'm going to change into those and then back, head back into the venue. Well done.
on table 19, the Anderson and Alex Milton. The Anderson and Alex Milton, table 19, please.
Well, I'm back in the room, it's a bit of a state because I obviously uh, slept in it and didn't bother getting it cleaned. I never actually showed you the room. See, speaking of Kaz and Mike, and they weren't very happy with my room, their room, but I don't mind mine, it's pleasant enough. I quite like that you've got this extra door bit to shut between you and the toilet. So the toilet's in that room out there. And then you've got effectively a second door between you and the hallway, which I quite like that. Although I always wear earplugs and um, I mask at these places just to be sure. This is the bathroom. So you had the shower this morning. <laughs> uh, and then, um, a little coat hanger thing but I never bother hanging anything up so I always look like a tramp <laughs> toilet yeah seems all right I'm happy enough with it oh. nice kettle I don't know how to use tea bags apparently so that's quite a nice little view over there across the I don't know what like some sort of downs or something like that nice view just ordered myself a pizza. For, is this like, well, it's about seven o'clock now from the hotel. I spoke to Mike and Kaz. And they might be going out to eat, but I've been a bit lucky. I had a bit, of, I had a real horrible game. Just uh, let it get to me today. It's not really good. I've just kind of got that thing at the moment where I just can't be bothered. And then when you can't, you know, I can't be bothered to be here to play. Not good really because of that. I just let things just annoy me. It's bad really. Been really good at being like, like behaving sensibly and prof like trying to take it seriously and be act professional. And today I didn't really. I just let things annoy the hell out of me. Which they did a couple of days ago as well. Because I'm like here, but I don't want to be here really. Can't be bothered to play in this event. Um. Thing with the hotels just annoyed me i'm not staying at the venue i mean this place is pleasant enough but it's like it's just one more thing so the pain in the ass of the drive getting here so late can't really be bothered to play english pool it's a struggle with the table my tips knackered as well but i didn't have time to change it i didn't realize how bad it was until the day before i left i couldn't play i tried sorting it out and i made it worse uh so it's just one of those things and then they played this game and um I played well, but those of things just kept annoying the hell out of me and like distracting me. Like I can't, couldn't. There wasn't enough room around the table to do my break. Well, I normally got a really good break. Yeah, you know, my break won me God knows how many games in the last IPA event. So that's really flipping annoying because it would have been so easy to make. There's so much room around those tables for the spectators. It would have made no, would have been no problem at all to move the table one foot further away from the wall. But they didn't. It's just like. That's just crap, really. So easy to get that stuff right. They weren't pushed for space there. They just made so much space for spectators around the TV table, of which there were barely any, and screwed over all the play the players on the main on the other tables. That's just ridiculous. Once again, just uh, I'm always seem to be struggling with the tables. It was just the tables we've got at our club. They're like good enough but they don't play like tournament tables or anything like it. And I'm always, always struggling with the pace and the table when I come to these events. I mean, I've been practicing on, like last three days, I practiced on speed cloths at our club. And again, nothing like those. The to be fair, the table I played on this time was slower than the one I played on last night, but it's still faster than our speed cloths. I always feel like I'm starting these events at my back foot. Didn't help but once again, like today, I didn't start until two and a half hours after I should, not more than two and a half hours, no, nearly nearly three hours after I was scheduled to start. And then tomorrow again, I'm getting a buy, I'm getting a buy through two rounds. So I'm, I'm into the winner's qualification. So I'm playing somebody who's already played and won two games. And Mike Williams, once again, is into the last 128, two tournaments on the trot. So he's playing someone who's played potentially three games on those tables and he's starting out at zero. It's really bloody. It's like it's good to be through the things, but that only works if you you could start well. And if you need to adjust to the conditions, 
you need the time it takes for your opponent to adjust the conditions as well. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, I need to go and collect my pizza from the bar. So I'll catch you in a minute. That'll do me for now. Thank you very much, Campanile Hotel. I'll have left a drink over there. Balls. Saturday something. 10.45, I think I'm going to... I've just set my alarm, I didn't get a seat till like four. I'm gonna run downstairs to get some breakfast, then probably go back for sleep for an hour. I sure need to leave first. Ugh. Oh dear me, I can't be asked for you much. Seems alright. Oh, I've got myself a little snack for later. I'm on the third floor. Still view out here. Well, I'm on in 12 minutes. I'm still at my car park in my hotel, and I've got to get my shoes on. So, into it today. Couldn't even, I haven't even bloody showered. Just brush my teeth. So, I have to go and do that when I get back. Struggling with motivation today, really am. Ugh. Again, I've got a bye, so I'm playing a guy who's already practiced on the tables. One match. And I'm still. Still struggling with the condition. So, not exactly uh, revving in this opportunity, but we'll see how it goes. All right, catch you in a bit. This fucking oh, some annoying. <laughs> Sorry. I'll just finish my uh, winner's qualification match. Um, not really sure what happened in that game. It was a weird one. Uh, played a guy called Stephen Anderson, a uh, Scottish guy. And he looked really good. He start, He had a phenomenal break on him. Um, he was really in tune with the table when I was struggling like hell. I couldn't control the white. I, I, wasn't even I was also in a weird mood where I couldn't be bothered to play safe which is not very professional but something like so we broke the first game potted three reds and then bop 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 uh, game over then I broke dry um, I left a really easy table I can't remember if he cleared up that time I think he might have done I can't remember I, I can't quite remember but anyway I, I, at some point, to go either 2 nil up or 3 nil up, uh, he just played one shot where he was trying to get position on the black and he somehow just slightly overrun it and ended himself welded to the welded to one of my balls and snookered on the black. He was literally two millimetres away from being perfect on it. Was it the black? Yeah, it was. And he left me like a pretty easy run out. And it kind of like flipped the game completely it just went a bit weird after that and um i mean i didn't do anything well i didn't play well at all but somehow i, I just he got kind of um got a little bit it's almost like he had like the i was on like the other side of the sort of match that i had yesterday where i just it just came i had it really easy because uh I, I tried doing a few clearances and i just made a right mess of them i was nowhere near playing well enough i did one break and run but it just seemed it just seemed to not be able to finish anything off somehow suddenly. Um 
So instead of, I was thinking I was going to lose 6-0. I felt, really felt like he was that good. And I was feeling terrible, like not confident. Q arms wobbling all over the place, not feeling like good at all. Couldn't control the white. I thought I was going to lose 6-0 and I won 6-3. And I really don't understand how. All I did, all I did well was a couple of little clearances. I did have a bit of run of the ball after that point. I think what happened was when he screwed that up, it kind of flipped the run of the ball to my direction. I think that's what happens. If you have a guilt edge chance and you mess it up, you kind of like, you kind of, it's kind of like you're doing that to destiny and destiny does that back, you know? It's weird. It's so weird how that works. But, um, yeah. So I'm through to the last 128. And honestly, I don't think I played one good shot. Didn't play well. I probably played better yesterday. And I didn't play well yesterday. And somehow I won against somebody who was pretty good. It's just ridiculous how this, this game goes like that sometimes, honestly. Yeah. It's quarter past three now. I think I'm going to go back to the hotel and have some food. And then I'm going to try and find a pool hall and get some get my arm going because I don't feel comfortable playing at all at the moment. And I know I'm struggling with my tip as well, which is a, is an extra little thing in my head. But I'm coming, I'm walking into games, not feeling warmed up, and I hate it. I hate it. I need to be cute. I need to come into a game queuing all right. So I'm going to go find some some sort of pub or table, play there at like. Eight, nine, ten, something like that. So seven, eight, nine, something like that. Just put a couple of hours in. Just make sure I walk out that door queuing the ball well. If I do that, maybe I've got a chance. If I don't do that, I have no chance. That's how I feel today. I don't feel up for it at all. So I got away with one this match. Really definitely did. I don't know how. Really don't know how. But um, I need to do better next game because it's not going to hold up. Wait, let's see what my chicken tikka masala looks like. Pretty good. Do you need? Hang on. Okay, the uh, naan's a little bit on the toasted side, but otherwise I think that'll do. Oh, I'm starving, so that's be good. A lot of onion in there for fans of onion, which I'm bloody not. Blech. Yeah, I might get something actually.
behind Northern Smoker Centre. Kind of great for the match. <laughs> Right, well, back it's like one something o'clock. Uh, got staffed seven one. It's going to be a common theme on this channel at the moment. It's the same thing. Can't control the white. Don't understand the tables because we don't play on anything even vaguely like them. And even though we went and practiced at Northern Snooker Club Centre or whatever, those tables play like my tables at our club. Play. I mean, I might be mucking around not playing very well but I understood how it worked and these tables I just don't get it I hit at one point on the whiteboard and it doesn't do what I expect it to do oh it's so hard the guy I played uh, was it Stephen Adderall was it Steve anyway he was um he was really good he played really well his cue ball control was superb um I mean, I played okay, but it just—it was the level of the opponent that just showed me up, really. Because I just—I played okay. If you could excuse the fact that I didn't control the white and I potted the white like four times or something crazy, like four times from nowhere. Every time it was like from nowhere. I don't know how I did it, just because the table didn't react the way I expected it to or something. Anyway, uh, and then I had. I couldn't break properly because there's no room around the tables again. So one of the breaks ended up throwing a cue ball off the table. I kept having dry breaks. Or when I did pot a ball, I had absolutely nothing. My balls are all screwed up and his break beautifully. So it's just a flipping, it's just crap. This is not, you know, I'm not even getting a chance. To, like, I felt like I was queuing pretty well. And when I was potting balls, I was potting some really tough shots. It didn't look like I was going to miss. But nothing else, you know, for somebody who's game, my game is heavily built on precise cue ball control. When I don't have that, it's just, just, this just, it's just destroying me, destroying my game. <sighs> I have to do something. I can't go to the next event playing like this. This is just ridiculous. I just, I'm so behind every time I'm playing in these events from day one. So, so it was the same with the UK Open. But this, I, I managed to get it at the last IPA event. I kind of got it. Whereas this time, I never did. Never did. This time, I, mind you, I suppose I only had three matches this time. And then, and then uh, it's a trouble. If you, you're starting off later on into the event, people are already warmed up that you're playing against. So they're acclimatised to the conditions, which they might practice on all the time anyway, and I don't just so hard it's so hard it's like a difference once again it's like a different game it's a different sport <sighs> so frustrating because it's like I know I'm a really good player and I'm just <sighs> can't get out of first gear and it's entirely because I just can't get my head around the tables and I don't know what to do about it because this is just going to go on and on. I might as well not even bother playing it. If I can't practice on these tournament tables, I can't play in the tournaments, basically. It's just ridiculous. I just... I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I've got no practice facility that's any use for IPA. No practice facility that's any use for the matchroom nine ball event so us open the um the gb9 plays fairly similar to the r sam table so that's okay although i don't know that that's going to be the case in two weeks because i supposedly have recloth the tables so i'm not too worried about those tables but the ipa i can't do this again i need to practice something before i go into it and, the, and when we go for the US Open, honestly, we need to get our own table somehow and um, set it up to play with a Strachan 860 cloth and, decent, and really expensive cushions. Uh, it's just a no, it's just a waste of time even going to the US. Otherwise, I can't do this again. I'm just, this is the second tournament on the trot where I've not even got going. I'm 
losing the people, not necessarily as Stephen Ladderall, but certainly I've, I've lost to other people recently who aren't as good as me. And it's really, really annoying because I know if I played them at my club, I would destroy them. <sighs> anyway, I've got a banging headache. Uh, go to bed. Might pop by tomorrow and check out a little bit more before I head off home. Don't know, see what sort of mood I'm in, but I don't know, it's just frustrating. But the worst thing about this whole weekend is the fact that my room fucking stinks of onion. <laughs> I just went and sprayed a load of antiperspirant around, but now the antiperspirant is faded. I can still smell the onion, even though I've taken the tray out of the room. Oh, that's so disgusting. Oh. Right, bedtime. But, um, yeah, catch you in the morning. Cheers. Uh, it's Sunday 29th for May. It's like 10.37. I've got 23 minutes to get downstairs, have some breakfast, come back, brush my teeth, grab a pack all my stuff and get the hell out of here. So, I get a move on. <laughs> it's a nice view out here, though. Oh, bye bye bedroom. Right, I'm gonna to pop to the hotel for a little bit. The other hotel, now I'm out of this one. Watch a little bit of pool, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, then head off. We'll leave at like 12, 12 30, I'll be alright. It would be a bit of a shame to come all this way and not actually sit and watch some pool. Cause, so, we'll see if we can get a little bit of footage before I head off. Catch in a bit. Well, let's get one last little uh, trip inside the Cedar Court Hotel. And then get back on the road home for five hours. Ugh. Right, well, I've got no more excuses about the tables and the cloths. Can't open it. <laughs> Come on, you bit. I've just bought myself blue IPA cloth for a seven foot table. So, just quickly spoken to Adam Humphreys, my friend who's from Rocket Ronnie's, and we're going to try and get it fitted to a table. So, no excuses for the next event. <laughs> so much deliberation you only get one shot every three minutes <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is the guy Steve that might beat me last night. He's a really nice guy, so it's good to come and watch some of his game.
Right, that's me done. I'm gonna head back home. I uh, don't know if you want any footage of me traveling a million miles up the road. I might film some, but I'll decide in the edit whether I can be asked to keep it in or not. Oh, I just I should have asked her name. Somebody just said um, hello to me as I was walking out of the venue. So and um, said so enjoyed my video. So thanks very much for that. I should, I'm such an idiot. I should have asked what your name was, but I was try too concerned with getting out of the way. Uh, I appreciate that. Thanks for anyone who's like, I've, I know a few people have come up to me and said they watch my video, so I, I do really appreciate that because it is a bit, it's just hard to know that people actually watch this stuff. I don't know. So cheers to that. Yeah, I'm going to head home and uh, see if I can get a roast dinner in before the end of the day. Catch you in a bit.